evening, everyone. We'd like to dedicate tonight's performance to the memory of our dear friend and colleague, the late, great anarchist historian, Paul Average. On this set of the Brig play about prison, here at the historic, yet new, Living Theater, we are proud to bring you tonight, on May Day, a play about another kind of prison, exile. A fate experienced by so many immigrants who have, over the last century, right up to the present, been deported and worse for speaking out. The Living Theater and the Libertarian Book Club, both of whom, along with Howard Zinn, inspired the genesis of this piece over 20 years ago, have always refused to separate the arts from what Emma Goldman called the forces that give them their strongest impetus, politics, and especially the politics of anarchism, a philosophy which aims at the liberation economic, social, political, and spiritual of the human race. Those are indeed the very words you'll hear spoken by the subject of our musical portrait tonight. The Russian, Jewish, American, radical, feminist, anarchist, Emma Goldman. Or E.G., as she called herself. Now, the artist of our portrait, an early lover of Emma's, is named Modest Stein. We have a photograph of him with his pipe. His portrait of Emma has survived only in Emma's writings and in those of his cousin, Alexander Berkman, Emma's closest comrade in arms. And that was quite a triangle, the three of them. Let's show the video slide. There they are. Now, both Emma and Sasha were deported from these shores to Soviet Russia in 1919. And our story takes place 14 years later when a woman named Mabel Carver Crouch decided maybe it was time they came back to America. It's 1933. The Democrats have just taken back the government after 12 years. Well, Emma's ready. The question is, are we?
to Mrs. Mabel Carver Crouch, Stony Creek, Connecticut. Dear Mabel, I am sure it is useless to attempt to bring me back to the States, though I am quite willing and should be tried. But there is an anti-anarchist law in the books. Surely FDR is not going to set that aside for my sake. No, nothing but a revolution would make my return possible. And I fear me very much I have not as many years to live. As I already said, I don't mind if the matter is tried. I will not deny my ideas. And I will not promise to be good. Now, without some kind of compromise, do you really believe Washington would consider it, even for a moment? Love, Ella. Hmm. I can imagine what Sasha would say in answer to that question. I think it's a ridiculous idea, E.G. You'll just when America put you on trial all over again. Every time America put me on trial, she indicted herself. I hate it. I don't want to go back to the States, now or ever. Sixteen years I spent in their prisons. They threw us out, both of us, in 1919. So, oh, Nathan! Sasha, we two are voices in the wilderness, and how much longer do you think I can go on this way? If I go back, then maybe, maybe it's a chance to put America on trial. And isn't that what we were always trying to do, both of us? I suppose so, but... What makes you think the results would be any different now? I don't know. But I need America. I need to know, does America need me? What do you think? Is America ready for Emma Goldman? <laughs> yes. Are they ready to admit Emma Goldman and to admit how wrong they were about her? Probably. <laughs> how much has America changed? Don't answer that. <laughs> how much can they now accept of what we were trying to show them by our example? Very funny, E.G. E.G. For example, the great example. I can just see it. Look out, America. Emma Goldman's coming back home.
decide to deport her. I always try to What did she have against the authority? Why was she constantly defying law and order? Why did they throw her out? What did she do? Who did she think she was? The Green Queen Bee. A revolutionary dancer. A wasting Father. Oh, I remember him. <laughs> He's from my 